This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Until midnight tonight from the East Coast to the United States of America. Ladies and gentlemen, out to San Francisco, California, we go. And, of course, the musical stylings of Larry Bubbles Brown. <laughs> Hello, Lawrence. How are you? I always used to like that when I listen to radio, you know. Uh, oh, yeah, the musical stylings. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Evelyn and her magic violin. <laughs> Musical stylings of Phil Spitalny and his all. Yeah, well, that was uh, that that featuring featuring uh, what's her name and her Evelyn and her magic violin. <laughs> that was uh, what part of this. Phil Spitalny had an all-girl orchestra. Although now it would have to be called all women or all he she. <laughs> so he was a, he was ahead of the curve when you he, think about he was it. Ahead of the curve, yeah, yeah. Uh, but hello, Larry. Yeah, I was going to tell you, we just had, uh, this is unbelievable, we had Comedy Day on Sunday, and, uh, yeah. you know, it. I've lived in California for 40-some years, I, I think I, I've seen it rain once in September, well, we had a downpour on Comedy Day. Oh, I see, okay. How, how did Comedy, so I guess it didn't happen, or what? We did it, and there were maybe 150 people. So, and, and you remember, I've got a picture of you and me at the 1986 Comedy Day when they had like 7,500 people at the band shell. So yeah. it's really, I don't know, maybe it's outlived its time or something, but that used what, to be such a big event. Um, yeah. <clears throat> well, where do they do it now? At your apartment? They could, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, they do it in the... Uh, a part of a Golden Gate Park, which has been renamed for Robin Williams. Oh, Golden Gate Park's been renamed, or the area? Just the area of Golden Gate Park, yeah. Robin Williams Meadow. Oh, okay. And there's a w Robin Williams Tunnel now. There's a tunnel in uh, yes, in uh, in Marin County. Yeah. And uh, is there anything else named after Robin Williams, or is that <laughs> it? No, yeah, there probably should be. Uh, I'm hoping to get an off ramp named after me someday. You know, I'll tell you something that bothers me. And, you know, I mean, I had my issues with Robin in the day. Uh, basically, because I didn't like his theft of material from people. Uh, I felt that comics had spent, it was hard enough for a comic to come up with a funny joke, right? And then mm -hmm. for him to steal it, and then it automatically became his if he did it on the tonight show or whatever and so i always had issues with him on that and he knew i had issues with him on that uh but you know as years went on he became almost guilty about that i think am i right or wrong uh i know if you i know if people called him on that he would uh pay the person and uh yeah I don't think he, it wasn't like a, he would use a thing once or twice. I don't think it was like most joke theft. I think his mind would just kind of like a pick up like a blender. It was you know, a sponge. Spit it, it was out. a sponge. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't intentional. No, um, no. But I've had, he I've, got to the point where he would not, he stopped going into comedy clubs for a while while other comics were on stage because he didn't want that to happen. So. Yeah, well, also he, um, I, I, you know, I heard one story from a comic who was riding with him in a cab. And he told Robin a joke or said something funny to Robin. And then about three blocks later, Robin looked over at him and said the same line to him. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, it was, yeah. Uh, I think Slayton, right? Yeah, I, I don't know if it was Slayton. I can't remember who it was. But, it, it, you know, that was indicative of, of it wasn't a conscious stealing. It wasn't like he right, wasn't. Right, yeah. It was... It was subconscious, and uh, it, it happened, you know. So, I mean, I I never liked him for that because I felt that as soon as he took a joke, for instance, let's say you have a joke, and it's a good one, and you like it, and it's a, 
It, it, it took you a while to come up with it, but once you came up with it, you said, patted yourself on the back and said, good boy, I got a great joke there. Then he would take that joke, go on The Tonight Show, do it, and you could never do it again because people would say you were stealing from Robin Williams. <laughs> yeah, that's the irony. But, and, uh... and that bothered me. You know, that, that incensed me, actually, because of all the people that didn't need to steal, it was him. There's a great story also about Tim Thomerson. Do you remember Tim Thomerson, the comedian? Yeah, I loved him. Yeah, had a, a great act and a great comic and, and worked at uh, uh, the, um, uh, what do you call it, the comedy store. And uh, one day, Tim Thomerson's watching The Tonight Show, and Robin steals one of his jokes. So he's incensed, and the next time Robin shows up at the comedy store... He grabs Robin, slams him up against a, 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 a wall, and says, never, ever steal a joke from me <laughs> again. And meanwhile, his wife is off to the side, and she's got a checkbook out, and she's writing a check. Wow. And saying, here, we'll, you know, we'll pay you for the joke. And he, she hands him the check, and Tim Thomerson rips it up and says, No. I don't want to get paid for that joke. I want my joke back, you know? And, and and you can never repay me for that joke. It's already been sullied because you did it somewhere else, and now you're known for that joke. And I think that was the essence of it. I, 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 th I think there was a certain uh, kind of, uh, of uh, uh, outrage that some comics felt about having a joke stolen. You know, I mean, yeah. I remember sitting in the back of uh, Cobb's Comedy Club and uh, everybody was huddled around a TV set because Robin was going to be on The Tonight Show. So he goes on The Tonight Show and throughout the group, you can hear somebody raise their hand and say, my joke. Another one went, my joke, my <laughs> joke, really? my joke. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it wasn't that Robin wasn't talented, although... You know, I, I still to this day try to really figure out what he did that made him so funny because I never, he never made me laugh hard. But anyway, that's not to say that he wasn't a nice person, you know, that he didn't, wasn't out to hurt anybody, but that always no, he, bothered me. He was about, the nicest, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the, that was the thing, though, that always bothered me because uh, the, he was stealing from people I love, you know. And and uh, so it it was a, a interesting kind of thing, but you know he um, what bothers me about the lionizing of his death is that the signal I guess that goes out to everybody is, hey, if I commit suicide, will I get a bridge named after me? <laughs> you know, in other words, we're 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 honoring a really rather terrible selfish act which is suicide's a selfish act no question about it i don't care how much pain you're in the suicide is going to cause pain for other people do you get what i'm saying well i think with the, the dementia he had i don't think he knew i think he was so out of it yeah. i don't think that would uh fit his case i just uh from everything I read about that, he literally had holes in his brains and yeah. Well, I mean, and that's terrible. But the fact is, if he had just say, not committed suicide, just died of something, would there be a tunnel named after him? I think if he just died of something, there would be. Yeah, he was, you he think was beloved. so? Okay, yeah, all right, yeah. yeah. But and I understand why he was beloved. You know, and and when you say you loved him and you thought he was terrific and you really felt, I remember when I talked to you when he died. You felt yep. very bad about it. I did, and uh, I think... Uh, and, and you're somebody I trust, so I trust, because you had more of a relationship with him than I did, that he was Yeah, and I think, the, uh, like you said, the joke theory was, uh, like you said, it wasn't conscious. So, I, I mean, and I know guys that do steal jokes consciously, and those are not good guys. Yeah, yeah. I mean, occasionally I would say something, and then I would credit the guy who made up the joke. I would say David Feldman said that, or Larry, as Larry Bubbles Brown says, blah, blah, blah. 
but uh, that doesn't mean I didn't use it, but it does mean that I credited the person with being the originator of that saying. I mean, I use your one line about, uh, uh, you know, uh, I don't, you know, I don't mind if somebody steals my identity, then they'll have no life. Yeah. And, but I, I say, as Larry Bubbles Brown <laughs> says, right? Uh, you uh -huh. know. But I'm not a comedian. You know, I'm not going on The Tonight Show doing a set and then stealing a joke from somebody. So, who who else were noted as great joke thieves? Wasn't there a, a there's a, a Latin comic that was no oh, I the guy I think yeah the guy that did the Mark Marin show Carlos Mencia Carlos Mencia who I don't really know but I that was the rap on him anyway and I guess they got some big brawl on the he was kind of uh, Mencia was kind of big for a while maybe twenty years ago yeah but he got you know he got a reputation as a joke stealer yeah and I think it really hurt him and it hurt his it literally hurt his reputation as a comic. Because everybody started calling him on it. It was like his name was synonymous with joke theft. You know what I'm saying? So. Uh, yeah, you don't want that. And. Uh, yeah. Had, had you ever heard that Charlie Chaplin may have lifted some bits? Uh, he actually, there was a British uh, uh, silent comic, and I'm trying to remember his name now. I can't. I can't remember it right now. That Chaplin stole a lot from. Yeah. Uh, wow. uh, th this guy was very big in England before Chaplin ever even got in the movies. I'm trying to remember his name now. Uh, and he stole a lot from him. Later on, Chaplin had him come to the United States and they hung out together and everything. They became fast friends. But a lot of the things that this guy did, uh, Chaplin adopted. You know, That's not to say that Chaplin wasn't terribly talented. But he was known to lift, and he figured, okay. he, you know, you could lift a British comics uh, bit because how many people watched British silent films in those days? Yeah, I think maybe uh, show business is noted for a thievery. I, I think screenplays have been stolen, and uh... well, you know, there's only so many ideas. You know, I mean, it, it, you know, they talk about songs being stolen. I mean, how many songs can you write before you're writing a, a, a song that already exists again? You know, they're only some. You're only working with how many notes? Eight notes, something like that. Yeah. You know, and you're and rearranging uh, them in a different order. And you know. our probably ninety-eight percent of pop songs are about love. So, what can you? How many times uh, can you talk about it? Uh, they, they once had a station. They said love songs all the time. Like that was. You could play anything practically. Almost every song is a love song. I know. You know, um, I, I'm trying to think of so, uh, of a song that isn't a love song. But. Yeah, let's try to think of one over the past fifty years. It's not about love. Um. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, so you know, I mean, but it, it, people are stealing continually. But it, sometimes it's subconscious. I mean, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, George Harrison. My sweet lord. Was he so fine? By the chiffons. Mm -hmm. Same exact notes. Just different lyrics. And he didn't mean to steal it. But, you know, he's writing something. Almost, you know, This note sounds good with that. And I'm like, hey, that's a good melody line. I like that. And he doesn't know that subconsciously he's lifting it. Right, uh, yeah. and that happened a lot. There was a guy down in uh, down in uh, Brazil named Jorge Ben. Um, full name Jorge Ben Jor, and uh, he wrote a song called Taj Mahal, and it went da 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 da. What was that? If you think I'm sexy yeah, and Rod you Stewart. want my body, yeah. yeah. And so he finally he sued um, uh, uh, Rod Stewart, and Rod Stewart had to pay many millions of dollars to him. Really? Wow. And, and I think he turned the money over to charity. Um, but I mean, if I played it for you, you would go, "Oh my God, it's stolen." 
you know, there was no question about the theft. Now, it could be that Rod Stewart, you know, had heard the song once, the melody line sounded good, then later on he's writing some songs, he comes up with an idea, and this thing is yeah. like floating around in his cranium somewhere, and he then writes it and says, oh, that's my new song. Right, so it's not, just, you can't condone it, but if it's not conscious, I think you yeah. got to give a little leeway. Yeah. But uh, song theft is very common. Uh, John Williams. Um, uh, what am I thinking of? Uh, the Star Wars theme was actually taken from a theme by, uh, what was his name? I'm trying to remember the name of the uh, the, the uh, fi film music guy. Miklos Rosa. Rosa. And it went da 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 and that was the theme for King's Row. Wow. And that's pretty close, isn't it? Yeah, and he John William, one of the best. And then it goes on and the musical refrain is da 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 which is the theme for Superman. Yeah, yeah. You know. So I mean uh, 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 now, whether it's conscious or not, I don't know. I don't, you know, does does John Williams need to steal his music? Nobody really ever accused him of stealing the King's Row, but if you listen to it, it's... In fact, one time I wanted to do a takeoff on Star Wars, and instead of using the Star Wars theme, I used the King's Row theme, and everybody thought it was the same theme. You know, so uh, those things happen. I mean, it, it, uh, do you ever hear people stealing jokes from you directly? Uh, not in quite a while, but it's uh, if you got like a, a one-liner joke, is the easiest thing in the world to steal, and then. Well, but your joke is basically but a bunch of one-liners, isn't it? Yeah, so it's, it happened more. I seem to notice it more when I was younger. Maybe I just don't care anymore. But uh, somebody emailed me last. Uh, week that hey someone's using your abortion joke in florida <laughs> and i said i'll let them have it i don't care and the abortion joke was the governor um <laughs> you know i mean what is the abortion joke uh a woman asked me if i was pro-abortion i said i'm not a pro but i'm pretty good with a coat hanger <laughs> I'm pretty good with yeah, which always gets you. <laughs> uh, comics always laugh at it. When I do it on stage, it gets you like <laughs> just a reaction of horror, usually. You know, I asked you this before, but, you know, considering that every week things get worse and worse for comics, are this, is there material now you just won't do because you're afraid to do it? Oh, yeah. Like, well, I rarely, I don't do that abortion just saying the word abortion no matter what follows that the crowd's already freaked out so and then you always get somebody going abortion's not funny well yeah exactly so i i that isn't the, that, that isn't why we're laughing at it we're at laughing well, at it to disempower it yeah exactly but they don't understand satire and, the, and they don't you know, understand don't think you can do anything about race or you know, uh, uh, you know, everybody says to me, well, you know, why can't we say the N-word? The blacks say the N-word all the time. Well, the reason they use the N-word all the time, imagine me, I'm calling it N-word, uh, and we, everybody in their mind knows what the word is, but the reason why they use the N-word a lot is to disempower it. So if you say it over and over and over again, uh, in fact, Lenny Bruce used to have a bit about that. And he took that particular word, and he said, uh, now I'm going to say it. And he said it over and over and over and over again. Jesus. And then he said, doesn't sound so bad now, does it? You know, because what we've done is we've just disempowered the word. When we make a word verboten, we give it power. Yeah. You know? And, it, and the same thing is with jokes and with humor. Why do we tell jokes? We tell jokes in order to be able to, um, uh, uh, you know, disempower the pain. Uh, yeah, and, it's, and the, it's always about uh, deflecting the pain. Right. Know, or... But we can't do that anymore. 
There's nowhere for the pain to be deflected. And th that's that's bad, you know? And I think very it's bad. And I people look at, so people wind up just looking very somber and <laughs> it's a very grim world. Well, I can't imagine you as a comic having to sit there and second think everything. I mean, I'm I, I would imagine that over a couple of years you found that uh, these uh, jokes you had slowly you had to get rid of them because yeah. every week there was a different taboo, you know. Exactly, yeah. And then it's getting so bad, I think, uh, you know, people, there's many young people would find Jerry Seinfeld offensive. Well, <laughs> the I cleanest don't, comic uh, in the world. Uh, that, that I find hard to believe, you know. Yeah. I mean, he was a perfect example of a comic who worked clean. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, well, you know something? He may have actually had some jokes that wouldn't work today, too. I mean, it may have been some stuff about women or dating or something, you know. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, it's just, it's terrible that you should have to censor yourself. Comics are out there to mirror the world around them, to make fun of it, and to, in some ways, dis disempower the pain that is out there. And, uh, there's nothing more un-American than censorship, I think. Oh, it's, it's the worst. What, we always are, you know, censoring things. And, uh, uh, you know, I was saying this the other night. And I will say it again. I hate America. And I hate America because I just watched this thing on the, the U.S. and the Holocaust that Ken Burns did. It's total, it's, uh, total, it's six hours long. And after it's over, you go, this country has never been what I was taught in school that it was. You know, when you went to schools, land of the free, home of the brave, rah, 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 we, we fight for the underdog, you have freedom of speech, blah, blah, blah. And I found in my lifetime now that none of it was true. Right. That I was literally impregnated with a lie. And uh, that's, yeah, that's not good. That's not good. Yeah. And, no, and the, how hmm? overrated our judicial system is, and many innocent people go to prison. And yeah, I mean, not all of it was a lie, and I was fed it, and I believed it for the longest time. And the problem is that I continued to believe it, and that's why I suddenly was considered a radical politically, is because I believed what I was taught, and now I expected it to be true, and it's not. And kids, if you're listening to me, don't listen to that crap they're feeding you in school about land of the free, home of the brave. You know, that, uh, oh, hey, anybody who's a, who, who, who wants to get away from persecution and stuff, where do they come? To the, you know, the teeming shores of the United States and that woman holding her torch high in the harbor here in New York City. And yet the fact of the matter is that none of that is true. We didn't let Jews into this country during World War II. You know? Um, That's true. You couldn't, uh, you, you, you could go to the uh, local uh, embassy and try and get a visa, but if you were Jewish, you didn't get one. Now, is that the country that I was taught? You know, I was taught this after the war, too. That, oh, we, we, you know, if you got a problem in another country and you're being... You know, it's, it's oppressive and so on. Come on over to the United States. And now look at all the Mexicans waiting on the border trying to get in. And they're trying to get in not because of oppression politically by the country that they're fleeing, but because of the crime and the, uh, the, uh, the, the living conditions. So how are they not the perfect immigrants for this country? They're the people we should embrace, and we don't. So uh, screw the America, uh, screw the United States of America. <laughs> you know, you ever, you ever be told? Were you ever told that story in school about the man without a country? And they said to yeah. hell with the United States of America. And the judge said, then you can never live in the United States ever again. And they, ex you know, they deport him. He's, he's an American, but they deport him. And I always thought about that. And I went, you know, I better never say that. I don't want to get deported. And uh, as I've grown up, I find myself every day starting to say, to hell with the United States of, Ameri of America. Because it's not living up to its promises to me. 
and not to you either. I mean, do you feel that it, it the, the promise you were taught is is alive and well? Yeah, there's a lot of flaw. I, it's like religion. It just you're taught up, you're brought up. Yeah. Throwing their shit at you, and then you find out oh, yeah, it wasn't really true. You must believe this, right? And uh, anyway. Hey, listen, I just looked at the uh, clock on the wall. Well, it's not really on the wall. It's on the computer, and it's really a digital readout. And it looks like we've... We've gone over. No, we haven't gone over. We're just at, at right at the kissing the end of our 25-minute segment. So l say goodbye, Larry. Goodbye. And I'll say goodbye to you, and we'll see you next week, okay? Will do. Okay, bye. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Mm-hmm. Okay, here we are, ladies and gentlemen, live and uh, going out live uh, initially. If you're watching this later, it's not live, okay? But anyway, I'm trying to get my microphone to just be in the right place here because what I did is I got a new, um, got a new mic stand. Not not one of these things. I, I, you know, they have the every all these people go out and they buy these mic stands that um, uh, that uh, there we go. Uh, the, these mic stands that uh, you know the to the hand, it comes down in front of you and all of that. And I find that ugly. I mean, I've got my microphone right down here, but you don't see it. You know. But it's all these people, you know, who think there would be broadcasters. No, oh, I've got to have the mic with the big, the big thing, and then the big mic. And the, this is a, it's kind of a smallish mic by comparison. It's an AKG, and it's a good one. And uh, uh, but anyway, so I got a new stand for it because the other stand was a little rickety and not exactly what I wanted it to be. So you know, uh, uh, we're we're okay. What, I'm dropping frames tonight? What is this, I'm dropping frames? I don't get that. Oh, well. I give up. I give up. I'm, you know. Oh, boy. Well, let's uh, let's uh, bring in these people. There's just a couple of them waiting. So uh, we'll, uh, let me see here. I say admit all. Okay, there we go. <laughs> and then I, uh, I uh, put up the Zoom panel here. And uh, wait a minute, uh, 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 Jeff. Hey there. We can't see you. you. We can't see you. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, there right. We saw just the top of your. You know what I found out? Yesterday was your birthday. That's it true. It is today, though. Oh, it's today. Today. Okay, so I'm not a bad boy then. No, not at all. Okay, so you're you're uh, how old today? God, I can't believe it. 77. 77. Okay, well, wait till you get five more years and they would be my age and then you'll really go, I can't believe it. <laughs> I know. Move your, move your camera again. You moved it down. Yeah, there oh, we go. Okay. There we go. Bye. Hello to Josh Wheeler, who after we're through here is going to do an hour after us, uh, uh, which we do by a bunch of hocus pocus and magic probably be the last time on a Friday that uh, Josh will be doing a show because I understand I don't know he says he's coming back on on Monday Jack Bishop but we'll have to wait and see okay on Zoom, we shall on see Skype. on Skype for the time being I guess he'll still do it on Skype till I can teach him the whole Zoom deal although same, you know same time that he used to. <clears throat> what same times that he used to do it. Why wouldn't it be? I don't know. Yeah, no. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, it'd be ten thirty on Monday, ten thirty on Tuesday, and then uh, one o'clock, uh, <laughs> midnight rather. Uh, yeah. Well, that, that's all Eastern time I'm giving you. For him, your actual yeah. time may vary. Okay. So, anyway. So anyway, uh, but Josh will be doing. Uh, Jack's uh, hour, uh, and uh, we what we do is we put that out over Facebook, and uh, we also let it broadcast over our uh, what do you call it our uh, 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 our 
live stream, a live audio stream, which a lot of you are used to listening to it that way. So either way, uh, have fun. And so anyway, you guys are you guys are in a hotel room, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're we're in the Cape. Yeah. We're leaving tomorrow. What is the maid doing behind you? She's going. The to maid. <laughs> <laughs> She's nice. <laughs> Very nice. So what, I was joking. I was joking. Was somebody joking. has to clean the room. What right? did you do for your, what did you what, what did you do for your birthday today? Uh, or tonight? Is, oh, what did we do today? Yeah, yeah. Anything special or? Well, yeah. We I mean we spent the day uh, to uh, looking around. <laughs> And we went to a museum mm -hmm. with uh, old, with a unique old cars. Yeah, but did you take yourself out to a big birthday dinner or something? Or yeah, no? we went out for, for a, okay. a, a very nice dinner for a place that we'd never heard of before. <laughs> See, a couple of, for for the last couple of years, we really haven't been celebrating birthdays, you know, because yeah. we're you can't, there were no restaurants to go to, you know. <clears throat> And all of that, but now we, you know, I guess we can get back to that. Go to the kosher taco place for your birthday dinner. <laughs> we went to an Italian restaurant. Yeah, well, I mean. But uh, tomorrow, maybe we should, uh, you know, it's mm -hmm. Passover coming up. Is it really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. High holiday. Marjorie. High holiday. It always mar bothers Marjorie, though. We have no place to go on the high holidays. Nobody invites us over. You can come to, you can come to our house. <laughs> well, uh, you know, uh, maybe we will next year. Yeah. But nobody, nobody invites us over. Marjorie goes, I just wish somebody would, uh, you know, ask us over for Rosh Hashanah or Yom Kippur or whatever. So. Can I make a suggestion? What What's your suggestion? On Wednesday nights, let Josh do the first half hour. Wednesday Please night, let Josh. Josh do the first half hour? Yeah, for a well, while. Well, I don't know if Josh is available then. Oh, okay. Hmm. During the week, he's still working. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If, if, if <coughs> Friday nights, he can do it because the next day he doesn't have to get up early. I love it's how you're thing. always making really suggestions easy. for other people. Oh, okay. You know? This work thing could really be a pain in the ass. What? Thank God I don't have to work anymore. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, he. But we, we have talked about it uh, uh, other places, and we have to figure it out. Because I'd like to have him continue doing some kind of program. Uh, but we have to do it in a way that doesn't impact me that much, and me have to do a lot of work to get it going, you know? Thank you. So, but we'll do it. And you're up for it, right, Josh? Yeah, we'll figure something out. Yeah. Even if it's uh, just whatever. Yeah. Like I could just say right now, hey, Josh, why don't you host the show now? I'm just going to go get some rest, <laughs> you know. Yeah. We'll figure something Cause, out. Because I, I am, you know, I am gotten to the point where I'm getting exhausted doing this, you know. Mm -hmm. I've been doing this how long now? We're in our eighth year. How long? You know, eighth year? Long yeah. time long time if uh hey if 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 people like it and want to call and want to talk mm -hmm. then i'll 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 keep doing it yeah yeah but we'll figure out something you know <coughs> uh we 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 talk to each other on saturday night just you know but i don't i don't think you want to do that as a show yeah nah, probably not you know because we don't want to lose that deal that we have but. yeah because yeah. they 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 were, maybe before that or something like we said you know yeah. and then it's time limited and then you know we're on to our own thing or whatever. Well, it was mentioned it was mentioned and and quite rightly so that uh, the um, uh, and now I forgot what I was going to say. Forget it. I'm you know I'm losing it. You know, uh, but uh, um, it you know it it, it it we you could uh, I can't figure out what I want to say. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm right. out of it. I, yeah, you know, we what, might figure something out there. You know what happened to me yesterday is I went and got the uh, the shot, you know, the, mm -hmm. the COVID shot. And today I've been feeling like crap, you know. 
Yeah. And uh, every now and then I get, I'm getting to the point where I can't get out a coherent thought, you know? And I don't know what that is. I think it may be the medicine, it may be something, you know? It may just be getting old and maybe it's time for me to stop doing this. And I'm not saying that, Brian, as a threat, but that I just don't know if I have my, my chops any longer. So, you know. I think we hear that just about every first few minutes of the ramble and then your chops go back into into high gear being no, who you no. are and I mean you're look look party. a couple of minutes ago just now I couldn't come out with a coherent thought okay that happens to all of us well but it's not supposed to happen to excuse. me what what'd you say yeah. Brian yeah what's our excuse yeah what's your <laughs> excuse you know yeah Brian's still a youngster you well know? your excuse is you didn't do this for a living for most of your life where I could go on the air and Hell, I could I could ad lib for four hours if I had to. Yeah. You know, and I don't think I could do that anymore. I think uh, I think that has uh, all all gone the way of uh, the dodo, as it were. You let Josh host one night. You let Jeff host one night. Let Brian host one night. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, not the not the. And word. let Phil host one night. Yeah. Oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> By himself. Phil, Phil wrote me today, and I I have yet to write him back. And if you're listening, Phil, it's not for lack of wanting to reply to you. I've just uh, all day oh, no, I have right. been in this la la land with uh, the the COVID shot reaction, as yeah. it were. And uh, it was you know I I. I I've, just felt puny, you know, felt kind of, ah, eh, you know, not a Hi, Pam. Hi, how are you? Yeah. She promises not to walk naked through the shot. Here. I know. I just told him, turn the computer. I'm trying to get in bed. <laughs> you know, that, that was the first time I ever saw you on the program. Yeah. Oh, oh nice. I, I, He's I, been I, on the show <laughs> before. I, I, was, I was watching, I was listening to the shows then. I wasn't calling in and and I, I skipped the show and Patrick was on and the first yes. thing I started talking about was Patrick was talking about the night before and someone addressing I go oh, shoot I gotta watch the show from last night <laughs> so I had to go back and watch the show from last night the yeah. night before yeah, yeah. Oh, God. That was so bad. but it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't bad it enough it, 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 it wasn't bad enough that I'd get demonetized but you know <laughs> I know. So the time he got demonetized is when Phil was in his gibbies. Yeah, 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 yeah. But anyway, yeah. so I, I heard from Phil last night, and uh, he, um, uh, yes, or today, rather, and I just haven't had time to reply. So if you're listening, Phil, uh, I will reply, but I just, uh, you know. Uh, he was saying, well, if you don't want me to call anymore, or, or if you just want me to call him, we won't get into arguments. So I'm willing to do that. You know, he's very... You sure? He was he's really helpful. If you don't talk the, politics or economics, he's a great guy. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm but, good. you know, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't know. Well, that I, he, I can't believe that he believes all that crap. You know, I just can't. I, I, I don't think he does. I think some of it's just to get everybody going on the show. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, come on. There's a certain point at which you have to give up the ghost on Trump, you know? I mean, it's just, uh, it's a losing game now, you know, so, whatever. A lot of people in this country that still think it's great, unfortunately. Why, though? I don't understand that. See, I don't, that makes no sense to me whatsoever, you know? I don't know, a lot of people followed Hitler to the end, so, who knows? Well, I, you know, I mean, well, Hitler came to power. Yeah. And then... He grabbed what power he had and made it oppressive. In other words, you didn't want to go against him because, you know, it just wasn't a good idea. It's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like living in Russia today. I can't imagine that you want to say anything against Putin. No. You know? No. And, <laughs> and, and it looks like a lot of people are getting really pissed with Putin. They're all leaving. They're, they're trying to leave. They don't want to serve in the military. They don't want well, to go right. fight that unholy war in in Ukraine. You know, they say, they say that they're seeing people. They see guys walking in the streets, and they start handing them whatever certificate or documents they have to to start getting enrolled, enlisted. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, it's just, uh, 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 wait a minute, who, who is this? Uh, uh, let me see here. It says, Phil might be right, not sure. What is, what is, is this Phil? I wonder. <laughs> Uh, is it, no, is it's gotta be Tony. 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 Would it be Tony. Ah, yeah, uh, okay. Tony. <laughs> <laughs> He's backing out of it now. That's why. Phil might be right. Is that what it says? I, I said it, I, Phil I, Jr. I think I was listening to Alex. I think Phil's mad at me for last night. No, he's not. Phil's not. Mad. Phil, if Phil didn't get Phil mad, mad, mad at me for last night, he's not going to get mad at you. No, you know why? I was. I tried calling him to say hello. I thought he'd be mad about when we were talking about Trump. And he's got me on block, I think, or it's not picking up. <laughs> I was gonna call Shecky, but I just fell asleep. That's, my that's just because of you. That's why. Yeah. That might be. I think he's mad at us. I don't know. He's yeah. I don't know. He's mad at you. What would he be? How could anybody be mad at Tony? Well, maybe because I was God talking text about text messages. Wait a minute. Yeah, oh, calls at seven in the morning. Well, that, yeah, that, that, well, that, 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 that doesn't make you mad at Tony. It makes you want to kill Tony. You know, <laughs> when I tell Sheck, you know, I can tell you guys this. This is a funny story. I, I'll say this because Alex is nice. I don't want to let your outer ego out too much. You went, the one time I called you, you go like this. I remember it. Tony, yeah, do me a favor. Don't call me for the rest of the day. And then he hung up. That was your, I told, I told Sheck you that. He's like, Hey, but that was nice you called. I, I felt very honored. <laughs> Did I call you? You, you? you called me one time. He says, Tony, do me a favor. You said it very nicely. No, yeah. but I think it was something about some advice I wanted to yeah, give you. Yeah, you were very nice. About very, the whole you know. cancer thing. And then I said, yeah, yeah, and no, now that I've given I've been you. I've in a nice way, yeah. And now that I've but given the way you, you said it, though, Alex, is like, Tony, yeah. I think, very so. I think I wanted to give it. you the name of my urologist. I took it back now. Yeah, I called him. Yeah, yeah. And I then, after that situation, I after I did that, I said to you, "Now don't call me." Yeah, but you said okay. it in my nice way that I laugh when I hung yeah. up. That because, was nice because, nice because I felt it was like you were like a Beetlejuice. You know, if I yeah, say I mean, your name three times, I can't get rid of you. It was the way you. when you when I hung up, I was laughing. I was already getting a cup of coffee, but you said it in a funny way, like it was like, "All right." <laughs> Has anybody oh, here oh. been uh, been a, a, honored to get a phone call from Tony? A phone, well, a, a phone call, that would be an honor. <laughs> that would be an honor. Several oh. phone calls from Tony. You know who I'm friends with now? I was going to tell you guys. Charlene. We're like watch women now. That's this guy. What, she'll talk to you? Yes. Is she the person that will talk oh, to you? Oh, yeah. We're like old ladies. Oh, good. Yeah, phone, oh, good. Like oh, good. Then she's made it easy for the rest of us. Yeah. yeah. But anyway. Yeah, I, I, think, right? I think he's mad at you, Alex. I wasn't sure. Me. Phil, yeah, uh, no, he's not mad at me. No. He's oh. not mad at Alex. <clears throat> he's, uh, I think, had enough of Tony for a week or so. <laughs> <laughs> cancer or no cancer. <laughs> cancer or no cancer. See you in a week. Yeah. yeah. But uh, right. anyway, so um, um, it's been quite a week, you know, uh, for Trump. Uh, it, it's not been a good one for him. Um, and I'd like to get Josh's take on it. Josh, hmm. do you think he's in trouble? Well, as I sit around in my 8,500 square foot house that's worth three and a half million dollars and think about that, uh, <laughs> probably is. Yeah, yeah. You know? I mean, because uh, I never realized that if I just called the bank and told them that I had an 8,000 square foot home that was worth 19 and a half million dollars, they wanted me money that I could then somehow not pay back. Yeah, I, mean, I, I should probably. Well, I may be available to host more shows soon. Maybe. Well, this uh, this place I'm in is 10,000 square feet. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You can just is it worth, it. Is it worth, it's at worth least worth divided by four. Five. Is it worth three hundred and eighty-five million dollars? Uh, 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 I think a little more than that, actually. Oh, well, I get fudging a little. I love I, I love the fact that Mar-a-Lago has been um, appraised at I yeah. think sixty-five million, yeah, and like he said it's worth six hundred and fifty million. Yeah, right. Yeah, uh, he's. I hate to find out how big he thinks his penis is. I, yeah. He said he's got big hands. He said it at the speech that day. I mean, that's, that's definitely going to cause him some problems. Um, 
a big penis? You know, oh. the one thing that, you know, uh, even famous people over the years seem to have not been able to run away from has been tax evasion and, and, and things of that nature. Uh, you know, it's amazing how, how well off people do often get away with a lot of stuff and, and a lot of crimes, mm -hmm. but tax evasion and, and those crimes have always gotten a lot of people, uh, that otherwise, you know, got away with stuff. So, you know, I definitely think that's going to cause him some problem um, because, you know, things like that are are provable. Mm -hmm. um, you can't really talk your way out of them, and uh, you know they they have some hard evidence. But you well, know, I, I think I, what's going to hurt Trump. I, I think even the hard, most hardened criminal out there has knows one thing: pay your taxes. Right. Yeah, or, that's yeah, the one okay. thing you don't s screw around with. You can go out and murder. You can run Murder Incorporated, but as long as you pay the taxes on the money you got for murdering people, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, you know, there's always such a unavoidable paper trail with financial things like that, that that can't really be avoided, and fraud within the documents can be detected fairly easily once they have the suspicion to start looking at it, you know? Mm -hmm. So oh, once, that's once, definitely going to Once they, once they have the problem. suspicion to start looking at it, your life's going to be a living hell. Yeah, it's not going to be, you know, yeah. pleasant for him. You know, what? what's going to hurt him more than anything, in a way, is the fact that slowly but surely his standing with the American public and, and the polling on him is creeping downward. Mm -hmm. um, you know, despite what anybody tells you, um, you know, there, there was new polling out this morning that was discussed, you know, uh, on, in, in the morning that, that has him down six, you know, seven points in a head to head with Joe Biden in a rematch, for example, as of today. It has his unfavorability rating at like 47 or 48 percent, which is pretty high. Yeah. It has his approval rating um, among all people at like 31 or 32 percent, which good. is yeah. not electable. Uh, you know, that same poll mm. has Joe Biden currently beating Ron DeSantis by five points in a head to head. Um, you know, it has. Uh, <laughs> It, it, it has bad news all over it for Trump. You know, it has uh, something like 67% of the people believing that Trump did illegally possess top secret documents. Well, if his favor, if his approval rating is at 32% and you add that number to 67%, mm -hmm. okay, does that not just tell you that pretty much everybody who doesn't worship him as a, as a false god says, yeah, he had them, right? I yeah. mean... Does that number not tell you that? That pretty much says that every person they asked who doesn't have a little statue of him on their above their bed or whatever said, well, yeah, he had him. I saw the picture. You know, <laughs> you know, the, everybody believes that he did. So, I mean, that's, yeah. that's what's going to hurt him more than anything because he can't personally, <clears throat> I don't think, handle that. Well, there are a couple of things uh, that are happening here. Uh, that uh, we don't talk about that much, but it's it's his it's his Achilles heel. He has lived and he's created his entire fame based on the fact that he's a multi-billionaire. Mm -hmm. I guess we're finding out that ain't true. Well, and I yeah, think the American was... the American public is now going. He wasn't a billionaire. You mean he's been lying to us about that? You know. Uh, I mean, how yeah, you, I mean, that's 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 what I'm saying is he personally can't handle that stuff that I just went over because it means that people don't like him anymore like he thought they did. And, you know, he obviously has an attachment to his ego, right? I mean, that's what I'm getting at. I mean, so he's not going to be able to function well in a state of you know, un, you know, where he isn't worshipped like he thought that he would. I mean, it's going to be harder for him personally than I think it is, you know, lawsuits and criminal charges. Well, you I know, think you know what that. it is? Presidents go out of their way 
to make their tax results known and to know let the public know how much taxes they paid this year you know mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that they can seem like they're just like you and me we got to pay taxes they got to pay taxes good for yeah. him you know but, but in the case of trump what ta we don't know whether he's paid taxes or not yes brian yeah and i think one of the things even more than that everybody the public thought that he's rich was that the public thinks that he knows how to make money, mm -hmm. right? Because when you look at some of those interviews from before, it's all about, oh yeah, this is the guy who's the best businessman in the world yeah. that can grow an empire. You know, those are the things. So now that he doesn't have that money, if that's all that's coming through, that's, you know, how, how to make it was the BS, right? Well, well all you had to do mm -hmm. if you were knowledgeable was to look at his history. For instance, how well did Trump's stakes do? You know, how well did Trump ties do? How well did uh, Trump University do? How well did Trump Casino down in Atlantic City do? Yeah. How you know, do you it, how do you lose money running his, a place uh, that's that just rakes it in? Yeah, and his his golf courses have historically not done that well oh. either. I mean, I know people will say, well, he owns five or six. Yeah, but I'm here to tell you, I worked in the industry for a long time. In his lifetime, he's owned about 40 because he can only own them for three to five years at a time before he's forced to get rid of them because he doesn't pay anybody for the work that they do. Yes, uh, 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 Tony? I used to go to my grandmother. My grandmother, when she was alive, she used to take the bus to Atlantic City. And uh, you would be like $50 for the bus ticket she used to she's to take you oh she didn't and get then, one of the free bus tickets well it was like one of those where you got a breakfast and you know what she used to say <laughs> she used to always go to bally's i said why are we going to bally's nana because trump doesn't give us free lunch <laughs> <laughs> <But Bally's> <laughs> <gave> <laughs> so you have like a buffet yeah Excuse me. Yeah. i always remember saying that yeah yeah no i mean it, 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 it it's it's uh, you know so I mean, the man's been pretty much a failure all his life, and he's only lived and made his reputation on lying about who he is, what he has, and how much he has. Uh, cool. You know, I mean, what else was the uh, uh, the Apprentice all about? Oh, hey, he's the big money guy, and he's you're fired, and uh, we're gonna, you know, you. Well, gonna, yeah, that's you, true. I mean, now I will say that you know, like the the New York thing. They have a good bit of information and a good case, you know, civilly and all that kind of stuff. But now I don't care again. And I think I've always been fair about this. And some of this is games. I, mm -hmm. I don't like the way some of it was presented. You know, I don't, I don't like that. I heard a clip of the New York attorney general talking and saying, that's not the art. <laughs> of the, That's the art of the steel. Yeah. I, we don't need your poetry and your rhetoric. Just present the facts. Okay. We didn't need you. You make it. Why do you do something like that that then makes it sound political when it's not political, but you said something that people then are going to replay and say, well, look, she, she, she hates him. No, just present well, the facts. Well, I, I don't think there's any... You don't need to perp walk I, 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 him I, like it's not yeah, law and order. I don't, think, I don't think there's any question that she doesn't hate him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, she even made a statement when she was running for office initially. They said, "If are you going to uh, go after Trump if you're elected, you know, attorney general?" And she said, "You bet I am." Yeah, you know, well, so I mean, she's yeah. never liked him, and right. but I don't think that's going to count against the case because the case no, is no, the I, case. I, I, the case I, I is the case. I don't think it will either. Uh, but I'm just saying, it's not necessary, and it's not, in my opinion, it's not wise. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people in New York clapped but you know yeah so what what's that get her you know you, you're here to make a case you're well you know it was funny it, the law. it was funny today i saw uh, somebody interviewing who's the guy who who gave them all the information the guy went to jail um oh uh the lawyer the lawyer yeah his, uh, what was his name again his lawyer uh, yeah Cohen. huh yeah Michael Cohen. 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 Michael oh, Cohen. You know that, right? And yeah. and she he was being interviewed. Oh. He was being interviewed on MSNBC. And I'm always very critical of MSNBC. So anytime Marjorie is watching it, I'm saying something like, you know, boy, are they, you know, they're feeding you a bunch of crap here, you know. Mm -hmm. 
uh, because I think they're just as bad as Fox when it comes to you know taking the news and. But anyway, she had she had Cohen on, and he's a very interesting guy, by the way. You know, I mean, he has the goods. He knows where the where the bodies are buried, right? And he was very helpful in this case. And in fact, Letitia, uh, I can't remember her last name now, right now. Uh, he he uh, she uh, she mentioned him as being the person who gave them the most information and got this whole thing rolling. And mm. she's interviewing Cohen, and there's, in interviewing him, it's all, and then what did he do? And then what did he do? And how mm. did he do it? And there's no questions there like, how are we supposed to believe you? In other words, she wasn't mm. asking any questions that were probing questions that a reporter should ask even though you know you like the guy and you're on his side, you got to ask questions that that you know put him in a corner and have him have to get out of it. Yeah. Am I right or wrong? No, it's it's just look, it's no different than some you know inside edition interview with some fucking lady saying she fucked some famous actors. What you know? I mean, yeah, I mean, but I mean the host know, of the show well, is sitting is, it, is sitting you know? there like this. Tell me more. It's you know, I mean. Insane. Same stuff. I yeah. mean, that's, you know. Now, I mean, again, I don't think that stuff's helpful, but similar to the New York thing, it's not as if, you know, MSNBC is really swaying anyone's opinion there. Independent minded people who tuned in that night to inform themselves in order to know who to vote for, <laughs> please, that doesn't exist. You know, I mean, they did it to make money. Right? Yeah, I mean, yeah well, of course, so, she's, <laughs> she's running for office right now. We should mention right. that. And, and the, the statement she made about the art of the steel or whatever, which I was about ready to make as a comment right. here, um, uh, that, the, you know, it is kind of the art of the steel, no matter which way right. you cut it. Uh, yeah, but, a, but, I mean, yeah. she did that for the New York audience who's going to vote cool. for her, and New Yorkers, by and large, are left-wingers. You know, that's it. You know, I, I, I say, why do I vote in this state? You know, because uh, who I'm going to vote for is going to get elected anyway. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So. Hello, Patrick. Hi. Hey. Uh, have you enjoyed uh, watching this week with Trump? I mean, on any level? I have better things to do. Oh, okay. Like what? I guess jerking off would be good. <laughs> That'd be good. <laughs> better things to do uh, yeah I think so I think that we're I think here's the thing I thought that when he got beaten by by Biden that's the last we'd have to see of Trump on television except an occasional you know visage as it were but no he won't get out of our hair right. leave us the goddamn hell alone you know you're Shut he up. doesn't bother me he because I'm not glued to the television and hanging on every word from everybody who hates him on television. Well, that's why I, I don't. That's I, why I don't watch MSNBC because if anybody was uh, uh, put put him in the White House, it was MSNBC and CNN. You know, and I have no reason to watch him either. I agree with you. You know. So it. He, he is, aside from you, when I came on here and you were talking about him, mm -hmm. I probably haven't thought about him in maybe two or three days. These, and I don't even remember minute, what uh, that uh, would have been about. Yeah, but wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me ask you this. When's the last time you thought about Obama? Or when's uh, the last time you thought about Bill Clinton? That. But that, that's how I do things in my life. No, but I'm saying that Trump considers it his job to make you think about him at least once every three days. Well, I, I mean, he's on like the local newscast, they'll have whatever. Yeah. But I don't watch the news every night. But what, so, is, what has he done to deserve it? To get, you know, to get his face on TV? You know, I mean, Obama doesn't go around looking for that kind of publicity. Bill Clinton doesn't look for it. Yeah. You know, the Bushes, the Bush doesn't look for it. You know, he's made people with money. Yeah. That, to me, that that's the left fault. So, you know, I mean, whatever. And and you know, to Josh's point, with 
the attorney general playing cutesy with word, um, you know, the art of the steel and that sort of thing. Well, then what you're doing is you're putting more eyeballs on the television because somebody on the left will say, hey, did you hear what the attorney general said? Then they're all jerking off to, oh, you know, she made a, a cute remark. So now it's all over Facebook. Everybody sees it. It's on fucking news. And, you know, everybody jerking each other off over, well, what should be, and I agree with Josh, just straightforward judicial stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. if there's a case, present it. You don't have to put cutesy words because I don't really see that with other case proceedings, you know. So just do it. And, you know, if you don't want to see them on television as much, that's the sort of shit that puts them on you. Yeah. You know, and it isn't even him. It's other people talking about him. Well, that, so, I mean, but he becomes the topic of conversation, and he gets up in the morning and thinks, how am I going to become the topic of conversation again today? Mm -hmm. You know? And uh, it's funny, but I think he actually looks upon the whole Mar-a-Lago classified documents deal as good publicity for him. When mm -hmm. it's really terrible publicity. It's going to be even more terrible publicity mm -hmm. if he winds up in an orange jumpsuit. Well, yeah. that's, yeah, I mean, it, it's, I'm sure he does look at it that way because he, I'm sure in, in his, I shouldn't say I'm sure because I don't know him in his mind, but I would imagine, or I think that in his mind, he thinks he's probably going to get away with well, it. Well, I think like that, he has everything else. I him. think the guy is Looney Tunes, and the reason I think he's Looney Tunes was the statement he made to Sean Hannity this week, which is the best ever, and that was that I can declassify something by just saying it. In fact, I can declassify it just by thinking it. Thinking it. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I don't know where that clause is in the Constitution <clears throat> that you can, you know, unclassify something by thinking it. But, I mean, what doesn't he think before he says what he says? You know, I mean, but it's mm -hmm. just, I, I wish he would just leave us alone, you know. I mean, Hitler had the, the decency to shoot himself you know this guy won't even do that you know so yeah yeah i mean that's uh some of the ridiculousness of that is i mean it's just it, it's going to catch up to him you know but i mean obviously that's not a true statement well I all mean, these years of lying about real estate holdings and about how much money he has and all of that is finally catching up with him. And it would have caught up with him faster if he didn't get become president of the United States. Yeah. But because well, he did, yeah, I mean, he kind of had a pass for four years, you know? Yeah, I, right. I mean, that's, you know, and I've talked about it before, but we know that that isn't true. I mean, like, you know, we've gone over. Even if a document is declassified, it is you know, it still goes through a process, you know, like I said, I have looked at mm -hmm. hundreds of classified documents that have been declassified from the Cold War era and the World War II era, mm -hmm. the highest secrets that the government had at that time. Mm -hmm. And it is a photocopy of the, a scanned copy of the original document with the original stampings. And those stampings have been crossed out with a single line or something like that. And I believe sometimes the initial of the person who did it, yeah. you know, to indicate this was a classified document or a top secret document or whatever, and it no longer is. And that is why you are now allowed to read it. Well, so, I, I got a thing. You know, I got a thing on my uh, Facebook page from Steve Hatley, who said, Alex, you're right about the declassification process, because I was arguing this last night with Jason for yeah. government documents. I work for the government and currently hold a secret clearance. When I worked for the NSA, I held a top secret clearance. There is a specific multi-step process for declassifying all documents, whether confidential, secret, or top secret. No one can just snap his fingers and declare a classified document is no longer classified. Anything classified top secret, as were many documents found at Mar-a-Lago, is considered by the government to be information liable to cause grave damage to the country and should it be released to unauthorized persons. 
any government employee aware of this as we are required to take a dish annual training reminding us of just how serious we must consider anything declared classified by the United States government. Yeah, you know, and, you know, I I sent uh, Patrick and Kevin a, a snippet, a paragraph earlier from an article that I was reading earlier about the use of the atomic bomb in Japan for mm-hmm. some research I was doing. And there was a paragraph in this article that said, you know, in, in 1945, uh, um, you know, it was going over the intel that was presented to the president at the time to make his decision. And it talked about the the magic or the ultra program. The British called it ultra. The U.S. called it uh, magic, where we were intercepting and reading mm-hmm. the radio transmissions of the Japanese. And each day, all of that was compiled into a short little three-page report that now has developed into what we would consider the daily presidential brief and all that. Mm-hmm. And that it was even the president was not allowed to keep a physical copy. The next day when they went and presented the new report, they mm-hmm. took the old report back from all the recipients. And the, the list of recipients was very small. They took those back to what we would now think probably is the NSA, but you know other agencies then. They destroyed all copies except one, and it was what was filed away. Mm-hmm. And at that time, even the vice president wasn't allowed to see this. That's how Truman didn't end up being informed about the bomb until mm-hmm. Roosevelt yeah. died, et cetera. But my point of all that is, to, without getting off into it, was there are rules and there were rules then. And by the way, that process that initiated with uh, Project Magic, Project Ultra, is what formed the bedrock of stuff like the National Security Act of 1947, which is what still today governs a lot of or served as the basis for later laws that we now know of for the handling of top secret classified etc cetera, etc cetera, documents i mean that's what i'm saying they would even come back the next day and say mr president we need your copy of yesterday's brief yeah. it goes back it goes in a file you're not allowed and everybody who received it even in 1945, had to sign a letter that but said... But I, when I was in the military, mm-hmm. uh, when I was in the military, I was in the Navy, uh, mm-hmm. I had top secret clearance mm-hmm. because I worked in a facility, Armed Forces Radio and T- Television Radio Service down in uh, Hollywood. And you're saying, why would that be top secret? Uh, you had to, everybody on that base had to have top secret clearance because in the middle of this uh, facility was a literally concrete laden bunker where they did all the top secret stuff you know the, yeah. the all the messages and things like that and so we had to be uh cleared so we could work in that facility just to be near that stuff yeah you know? i mean you know and the even in in 1945 truman was informed and 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 was forced to you know uh swear in a statement that he even agreed not to use any of that information from memory in his memoirs after he left the office of the presidency the same went with uh wallace you know uh henry stimson i mean it went with all the the eight or ten people of that group who, who they weren't even allowed to put that info in their memoirs and one of the reasons was because they didn't want anyone to know that not only had we broken the japanese code and we're and we're completely a hundred percent listening to their radio transmissions and and their intelligence mm-hmm. but we were also spying on our allies who were with us in the war we were reading and keeping the french uh you know everybody the canadians everybody and, you know we mm-hmm. couldn't have that information out there that we had broken everyone in the world's code at the time because we were we were very advanced at that and that's what i'm saying is the president can declassify anything. And I understand we're a long way from Truman, but look, he that's the deal. I mean, the law even said, Mr. President, you can't declassify this. You can't use it in your memoirs. I mean, it's why we didn't find out until 60 years later that the use of the weapon was justified. And people kept wondering, why wouldn't Truman, after he left the presidency, come out and say why I was told this and that and this and that and this and that? Because he couldn't. He sat on it. He took the heat, yeah. and he went to his grave with it. And history has backed him up. My favorite, That's what a man my, does. my favorite story was Einstein, who uh, they took the plans for the atom bomb to him, 
and they asked him if it would work. And he looked it over and he said, yes, it'll work. And years later after the war, when uh, at questioned about this incident, somebody said to him, why did you tell them it would work? All you had to tell them was it wouldn't work and they wouldn't have built it. And he said, well, no, I didn't they, think they'd be stupid enough to build the damn thing. They, they had a hell of a lot of people working on it. But, yeah. but you know, I'm just saying overall with the, the <clears throat> handling of intel and documents, I mean, that excuse is just so, it, it's not even on this planet. And it'll it'll all come out. Any, anybody, anybody else have a comment about this at all? You know? They just, I think... <laughs> One thing I always remember is my my mother would always say to me, "If you don't, if you're not honest, and and you you uh, lie, you're gonna get a bad pimple on your tongue." On the tongue, yeah. <laughs> you ever heard of that? Well, yeah, my mother, yeah, I'll that. tell you what I tell people <laughs> is the reason you shouldn't lie is lies are <clears throat> it's harder for you to maintain a lie. Than to maintain the truth because the truth yes. you just know you know it's it, easy. It, yeah it's oh, easy a lie you have to always keep up with the lies you always yeah, have well, to double that, I mean, down on the lies yes. you know I mean, but but Trump is a perfect example of that right you know I didn't have the documents the FBI put them there well I had the documents but I declassified them I mean well, <laughs> yeah, I mean yeah, you know what I'm saying yeah. well I, not only did I declassify them and people say that I I I couldn't. I, uh, all you got to do is think about declassifying. I mean, tomorrow it'll be another, you know, uh, he plays the telephone game with his well, own Well, here's, here's where it's become <laughs> tough, where it's become tough for him is the lawyers who are rep representing uh, Trump uh, at both the, uh, the appeals hearing and also with this uh, special master. Both right. of them said the same thing to the Trump people. Come back with the proof that right. these things were declassified. Come oh, because his lawyers won't yeah. say it. His lawyers won't say it in a courtroom setting because they can't. Mm. You know, because they know it to not be true, and they right. they can't get disbarred. You know, I mean, the the special masters turned out not to be so special for them, and and you know, every judge that they went in front of with any of this garbage, including the special master, I mean, to boil it down for people who don't understand the law very well, their answer has been LOL. <laughs> You know yeah, what I mean, yeah. I mean, okay. Yeah, I mean, it's it's it's, it's the horse shit. But I'm, I mean. <laughs> but I'm but I'm saying that that they they now it's on their on their part to be able to prove that this stuff that everything they're claiming was true, Correct, and yeah. and they can't come back with it without being without perjuring themselves as right. lawyers. Yeah, so yeah, correct. Won't. I mean, if when you're charged with a crime and you're on trial, and you put on a defense. What you do is you put on a defense. You put people. You present evidence of your defense. I love you don't the, just say I, I, I didn't do it. I love the way the appeals court, which by the way contained two Trump appointees. Yes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> said um, number one, come back to us, and secondly, they then eviscerated that judge that Trump right. found to like you know go find the special master and to do this and to do that and said that she was completely wrong in doing it and she should just get out of the case you know uh and and uh you know it has not been a good week for our boy yeah you know i would not want this kind of week but you're right you know something you said about taxes i think even gangsters knew the one thing you didn't do yeah. was screw up on your taxes you oh, know yeah, you, got, you could you, got, you could rob banks you could run <laughs> prostitution rings and as long as you said yeah here's the here's the tax money for the prostitution ring you were okay yeah, you I know? mean hey, it even got Patrick's hero Merle Haggard you know I mean even poor Merle went to prison for a couple of years because he couldn't pay his taxes yeah who else a lot of famous people have gone because oh yeah, <laughs> a lot of musicians. I I don't know what it is about didn't, musicians. Didn't, well, wait a minute. Didn't Martha Stewart go for taxes? Yes. Well, Insider went, trading, right? But yeah, they might have yeah. attached that or something. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I mean, yeah, she went because she she lied about about the insider trading. Maybe she didn't mm. do anything illegal. Right. She just lied to the FBI that she mm -hmm. didn't do it. Then it was proven she did it, and it was a lie. And that's the 
That's a felony. That's why she went to prison. She didn't right. do anything That's wrong. That's the other thing you shouldn't do. Don't lie to the FBI. She didn't do anything wrong. She just lied. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you if you are guilty, then it's obvious that in this country that you need to assert your right to just not answer their questions. Yeah, but the president said that that you know? the uh, that the FBI is uh, right. is a bunch of crooks. Yeah. yeah, and you know, and, and when you're, I mean, when you're subpoenaed for things, then you only give them what they were asked for. But they can't make you answer questions to incriminate yourself. I no, mean, you can refuse you know? to, uh, to answer. Uh, yeah, but I mean, yeah. you know, not every lawyer is a good. I mean, even rich people can get shitty lawyers. The other, to ask fucking Donald Trump. You know, the, the temerity of Donald Trump is amazing because the thing that I really loved most of all that happened last year was he said, you know, anybody who takes the fifth is guilty. He said that while he was in office. And then when they had that hearing here in New York, that deposition here in New York, yeah, for, yeah he took it 450 times. So Are you, you going to do it? Do it consistent. <laughs> yeah, at least be consistent and say, well, I cannot tell a lie. Yes, I stole that money. You know, I mean, <laughs> Don't answer it. I mean, you know. imagine being a lawyer. He must know what's going on. It's just, it's all, all insane. You know, it's really insane what's going, what's been going on. And uh, I just I like to see America have a little relief from it. But America seems to have involved itself in it an awful lot, too. You know, this division in the country isn't just the left arguing with the right it's it's uh, some of these nazi groups for christ's sake you know yes uh, mm -hmm. yes uh, I, I think you ought to name fridays fraud fridays <laughs> talking about that. all the fraud well you know um uh, it, it, i think we've learned a lesson here boys and girls pay your goddamn taxes you know um, um, at least something they gotta like the old movies remember the gangsters in the movies didn't they always say you have to have two sets of books Huh? Why don't we show the guy the other two one sets of books? Right? Yeah, yeah. You don't even want to have two sets two of books, books, you know, because they can find those. They you can, know, yeah. I'm sure Trump had two sets of books. You know, uh, I mean, no. it, it, you just don't. You don't want to screw with the IRS. It's the one, you know, the one thing you well, don't. Maybe want to I do. mean they could be making it up, Kevin. He believes in that QAnon shit. He'll tell you it's a deep state. He was playing the QAnon theme song or something at that rally he held there. It was a rally. They were holding the signs up. Yeah, yeah. I was reading that article. I thought QAnon was last year. You know, yeah. but I guess they're still out there. Yeah. Yeah. Still selling T-shirts and whatnot. Yeah. There's money to be made. Yeah. Well, I guess what we, I guess what we've done here is left you with nothing to talk about next hour, huh? Oh, well, we'll find something. <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh, it, it's a strange world in which we live. Uh, I said this last night, and I'll say it again. You know, I as a as a kid was taught what America is, and I believed everything I was taught. You know, hey, you're a kid. This is what America is: land of the free, home of the brave. This is where people come to seek sanctuary. You know, these are all the things I was taught in school, and uh, and on top of that, other other stories. You know about the creation of the the Star Spangled Banner, but they didn't tell me it was an English drinking song. You know, um, yeah. But anyway, um, but you know, then I watch this thing called the United States uh, and the Holocaust. And I realized that I was even lied to about what we were doing. We didn't do anything to save a single Jew. I think we, we took in 225,000 refugees, but that was it over a period of five, six years, something like that. And I just, you know, I just get very disappointed when I think that I, the thing that makes me a lefty is that I believed what I was taught in school. And that's the dream of the America that I believe should be, and it just isn't. Yes, Tony. You know, you know what I'm saying? You were saying you were, I was watching a documentary. You got me thinking uh, about. I was listening to the show last night mm -hmm. on Pete Seeger, and he was singing the song, mm -hmm. "This land is your land." And then he had the sign, "Fascists kill all fascists." Uh, this Did no, you, this this uh, this guitar kills fascists. Yeah. Yes, that's yeah. what it said. And then they said. Well, the war's over. They got Hitler. He said, "You can take it off." He says, "No, I'm not." That gonna wasn't. Take it by off. the way, that wasn't P Pete C here. That was oh, Woody, no, Woody Guthrie. Woody Guthrie. That's yeah. what it was. Yeah. And they said, "You can take that off." 
and he says, uh, PC guitar, says, I'm never gonna take it off because it's still gonna, there's still gonna always be around. Yeah. yeah, it was PC guitar talking to him. It's such a nice song, that one that he wrote. This well, there, there are more lyrics to it than the ones you hear. Mm. There's a whole second and third stanza there, where, which is basically, I think one of the lines is, you stole this land for you, for you and me. We, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, it's it, it's a very radical song. They just never sing that other part of it, you know. But you know, it it's uh, you know, I, and so I I just don't like the fact that maybe I was lied to, you know, and that I'm living I was living out the dream of America, and it just never lived up to what I expected it to be and what I was told it was. So you know, that's that's my my whole take on it. But, you know, I mean, we get lied to all the time about things. I found out a lie that I, that I found out today. I saw an interview with, um, that uh, Chris Wallace was doing with Tyler Perry. And he came up with a fact I didn't know was true. Uh, uh, what's her name from, uh, Hello Dolly, uh, Carol, oh, Chan Dolly. Carrie, Carol Channing. Do you know she was black? <laughs> Really? And passed for white all those years, but she was black. Yeah. Anybody here know that? See? No. Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, great performer, by the way. Did everybody know that Tony was really Mexican and not Italian? Not Italian. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, they're they're pretty much the same. They're immigrants. You, you know. Exactly. Put them on a bus and send them to Martha's Vineyard. I'm sorry. You know. I want to go to Martha's Vineyard. I think they would send me that. I was taking a holiday in. I don't Yeah. yeah. Well, they were promised they were going to have jobs when they got there, and they were being lied to. You know. Another reason for Tony to go. He has no job. It's just the insanity of the things that people think they can get away with. You know. And eventually, okay. hopefully, you know. The uh, chickens come home to roost. Anyway, let me see here. I got about oh, I got about a minute. How much time do I have? About two minutes, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see. Oh, so uh, uh, right after we're through here, uh, Josh is going to be doing Jack's show, but it's going to be broadcast on Facebook and also on our audio channel. Uh, and you can listen to it in both those places, and then it'll be posted later on. And I hope you people will stick around, some of you, and talk with uh, Josh. And I know that uh, Kevin will and, and Tony will. Uh, not Tony, but uh, uh, Mr. Blazik, Patrick, will do it. Uh, but it would be nice if the rest of you did, too, you know, because uh, he, he holds a nice-spirited discussion. Mm -hmm. But let me, uh, oh, what the hell, I, I, it, it, I can sign off a little early here, you know. Let me see here. That's it for tonight, folks. Um, uh, I'm, I'm out of here, and uh, Josh will be doing the next hour. Give me about, oh, maybe four minutes to get everything set up on the other side over here, and then he will be getting on the air. Uh, and uh, thanks to uh, Jeff. Happy Ooh. birthday, Jeff. Thank you, guys. Josh. Thank you all. Thank good you. talking to you. Have a good show. Um, yep. See you in a minute. Alan. Same to you. Brian, wonderful seeing you. Uh, the, uh, uh, Kevin, and uh, also Patrick, and uh, Tony, and who who did we just lose? We just lost somebody. Oh, we lost Kevin. Josh. Uh, Josh? Oh, Josh. yeah. Oh, yeah. He's getting ready yeah. to go on. Anyway, He's that's it. Everybody give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye back at you, okay? There they go, mm -hmm. folks. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Uh, and uh, it, it, it worked out okay. Anyway, I'll see you again on Monday, 4 o'clock, for the pop-up show. And then next Wednesday, 10.30, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Have a nice weekend.